want to kick things off um, in our discussion by talking to Lindsay and asking her about her experiences as, a, as an actor um, and her experiences with the play. Would you, would you mind maybe talking about your experiences for a little bit? Sure. Um, my, my greater experiences as an actor have been ever really involved talking this much on stage, ever. <laughs> um, in the area, I do uh, mostly Shakespeare, the Sun of Shakespeare, it's my favorite thing to do. Um, Todd approached me, Todd Hayward approached me about doing this play about a month or so ago. Uh, the first actress that was supposed to do it had like eight jobs and was in a play and couldn't make the time uh, commitment. And so I was like, ah, I don't really know, let me read it. So I read it for a week. Uh, and then finally got back to him and I, I said I would do it um, a little bit selfishly because it is a great theater opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. I do want to be an actress when I grow up, if I grow up. So, yeah. But also, um, you know, I did take into consideration some of the, the repercussions that could come from doing this piece. And um, as I was reading it a few times over and like looking at, especially in the first act, at Rachel in the first act, um, for a while, I didn't really like her. I thought she was just really idealistic and kind of like, I live in the Pacific Northwest, so I have to be an activist because that's what everyone around here does when they're 20 something. And then, as I read it more and more and talked to Todd about it, it was like, yes, she is bright eyed and bushy tailed, and she is a glass half full kind of girl, but she also, you know, does make the progression from being you know, this naive bunny rabbit into realizing what the world is about. And I, I think that the progression of her character, it's hard to call her a character because she was a real human, um, but the progression of her character as an actress for me was a challenge to try to get from that beginning of Sparkles to the ending where she's just so like, holy cow, what is this world coming to that I lived in? I thought I could make a difference, but obviously I am just one woman and, and the devastating reality that she faces. Um, I didn't know who she was before I read the play either, so I think that was, I don't know if that helped or didn't help, but I kind of got to get to know her on my own as opposed to all of these preconceived other people's notions of her. I wanted to ask you, um, as we talked last Wednesday, about being a Jewish American, um, what kind of impact has that had on you? And um, have you heard any complaints in this community? Or what do you think? Um, I think everyone wants me to have been impacted by it more than I am. I'm not questioning my faith. <coughs> taking a political standpoint because I don't think I'm educated enough, number one. Number two, because this play isn't about politics. This play is about one woman's story and her journey. And this could have happened to a girl anywhere else that you know progressive work is trying to take place. It just so happened that it happened in, in Israel and it just so happens that I'm a Jewish woman doing this. Um, I did receive one letter from one of the president emeritus of America High of the Jewish Student Union on campus asking me about my thoughts about doing this as a, as a Jewish woman. And, and I told them basically what I said Wednesday and what I'm here telling you is that, you know, regardless of, like, I don't presume to know the workings, the inner workings. And Rachel didn't either. And I think that's important. Like she says, I'm still new to this and I don't really know always what I'm talking about and how it's going to affect people. And, you know, and I explained to him that. It was, it, it's just to tell a story, to tell an experience of someone, to bring that to life, to bring her life back to life. Uh, Liz, we're going to talk a lot about um, you know, the situation in Palestine, but I, I didn't want to uh, pass up this opportunity just from an artistic standpoint to ask you about <coughs> the legal in a one person play. What kind of pressures are there? What kind of uh, acting pressures are there in carrying a show like that? Can you comment? You don't have anyone else up there to save your butt when you screw up. <laughs> um, <laughs> just yourself. Um, 
Also, then no one else really knows when you mess up. Um, I think being in a one-woman show that is a woman who actually existed, there is an even greater pressure than just being the only person on stage uh, because there is you know, the pressure to do right by her and to bring her words to life and to do the script justice um, to effectively communicate what she had to say. Um, but it's, it's a whole heck of a lot of pressure. Um, I'm not going to lie, I occasionally have some notes for myself in those notebooks up there. I think I should be honest with you and tell you that, um, just so that I don't get completely turned around. There are some things, especially in the first act, that the way that she jumps to and from subjects is counterintuitive to me. And so I, I would get to a point, and I know I'd be done with one thought, but I wouldn't know what thought came next. <laughs> In her mind, I know what will come next to Lindsay, and I know that I'm completely capable of talking for two hours about who knows what, but you know, I would be in rehearsal and say something and then go, period, end of sentence, what's next? And it's just, the second act makes more logical sense to me. So it was a little easier to take on. Well, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, I appreciate the performance. I really thank you for your wife and the great awards. Thank you very much. Um, this is Todd.